May 2022, and today I decided to start with Kujiga Yellow, Yellow Party, the Citizens Coalition for Change. We've been talking about this political party for a very, very long time. The party of Nelson Chamisa, the first party that Nelson Chamisa has formed. And as I have said before, Chamisa has never formed anything before, and he did very, very well by forming the CCC. If you look at the way that the CCC started, they had the advantage of a by-election, which was just around the corner. And they were in a corner. You remember I told you that Chamisa had been put into a corner to form the CCC. If there was no by-election, and if Zek had not announced a by-election, you are going to see that right now, Chamisa was still going to be running the MDC alliance. There are a number of factors uh, around this. Chamisa's reluctance to move forward, and I'm going to unpack it, obviously, as usual, as I do, because things are falling apart in the CCC. The level of confusion and despondency in the CCC has reached a level where key members have started leaving. And when I talk about key members, you saw what happened yesterday. Kudam Siwa, one of the smartest young men and business people in Zimbabwe, quit the CCC. And Kuda is a very nice guy. I know Kuda from way back when uh, hashtag this flag was started. So Kuda initially was in the UK and then he came to Zimbabwe. When he came to Zimbabwe, he was at first a member of ZANU-PF. He was actually part of the ZANU-PF youth structure. But as time went on, obviously, you saw what happened. He became very, very outspoken. I actually met Kuda and uh, Esilu Mumba here in Johannesburg uh, just before the 2018 elections. And the guys were fundraising. They wanted to raise funds so that they could push the effort to remove Robert Mugabe. So th that culminated, obviously, in the formation of this flag, where Kudam Sasiwa was the strategist, and where Fadzai Mahere became the legal, the legal advisor. So you remember that Fadzai Mahere was very key in a meeting that was held with uh, John Mangunja, in which he questioned the, um, the bond notes, the introduction of the, ben, uh, of the bond notes. So, Fazai Mahere became key, not as the original founder, but this idea started off with Kudam Sasiwa, people like um, Trevor Nube, very key people in, in this flag. And, and then Pastor Ivan, Pastor Ivan Mawarire, became the face of hashtag this flag. So from that point, you can see that someone like Kudam Sasiwa, very, very key in Zimbabwe's politics, but he has left. He quit out of frustration. And when I say Kudam Sasiwa is key, all the fundraising that you saw, that is before the CCC uh, rallies even began, the colors, the hoodies, the design, the, the, the font, everything that you are seeing in, in the CCC, you can trace it back to, in fact, hashtag this flag, Kudam Sasiwa and Fadzai Mahir. I've said this before. These guys were key in the formation of CCC. CCC is basically a, a sort of like rebranded hashtag this flag. So the quitting of 
Kudamsa Siwa is not just quitting. It's a protest. And it's not a protest by Kudamsa Siwa. This is a protest by Fadzai Mahere. And the, the reason is the two are inseparable. There is no way you can put Kudamsa Siwa in one place and then put Fadzai Mahere in, in another. The two always move together. Kudamsa Siwa was the campaign manager and the campaign strategist for Fadzai Mahere when she was an independent. So there is a lot of anger among various factions. So as I said, various factions have developed in the CCC and these factions are divided along the lines of people that are progressive, want to move forward, want to see genuine change. So people who want to rebrand the old MDC alliance. And when we look at these people, you are looking at outsiders. People like, uh, obviously, Kudamsa Siwa, Fadzai Mahere, and to a certain extent, Hopo Chungono. So these people, they support a transformed CCC. However, there is another group, or there's a number of other groups. So I can place the four factions that are already existing in the CCC. So the first, uh, first faction, obviously, that of Tendai Biti. The fa faction of Tendai Biti is very, very powerful. They believe that Chamisa is not smart enough to be president. He does not have the international credentials and Biti can be a better president. Then there's the faction of um, Job Scala. Job Scala be believes that he's more militant. They can move faster and go through a protest kind of action. And in this faction, obviously, you've got people like uh, Ngari Vume, who, who are outside the CCC, but who are working with uh, people like uh, Job Scala. And you also have people like Tsenengamu sitting in, those, uh, in that faction. I think if you look at what I've just said now, you can see that the CCC, the problems that are arising now, they arise from strong personalities, the new personalities and the older personalities. Then we can go to the tribal personalities. If you look at the tribal factor, you have someone like Washman Nube who feels that he is being underrated because he's from a Tveland region. He has come together with Dr. Tokzani Kupe. They've actually now become very, very close. And that is the fourth faction within the, the CCC. They want transformation, but they want someone who comes from a Tveland to be prominent. And hence, we have a problem now. The problem that we have is that Father Mahir is the most qualified person to be vice president in the CCC as we speak. If a C the CCC was really a new political party, Fadzai Mahir was going to become automatically the vice president because of the work that she's done in bringing about the CCC. People like Kudam Sasiwa, they have prominent roles, like the fundraising that he's doing, he's doing it using his own innovation. But Chamisa has failed to create that structure. And, and I always say this to you, almost on a weekly basis. Chamisa cannot create a system. The reason why he cannot create a system is because, firstly, his hands are tied. And secondly, he's surrounded by so much confusion, what he calls noise in the cockpit. So ever since Morgan Changrai died, Chamisa does not know who to trust among the people that are around him. Look at what happened with Douglas Monzora. That was the Secretary General of the MDC Alliance. But it was clear that Monzora did not want to work with Chamisa. In fact, he wanted to take over. Morgan Komichi, Elias Mzuri. The same thing that happened at that time. Chamisa is afraid that it's going to happen with the existing people around him. But he does not want to alienate them at the same time. So hence we have this problem that has arisen, factions in the CCC culminating in the departure of key members. And I, I see the departure of Msasiwa because Msasiwa said he's leaving on the 7th, 7th of May. That is in two days time. 
this is a protest, as I said, by Fadzai Mahere. The next person who is going to quit is Mahere, especially if uh, Dr. Tokuzani Kupe is appointed as the vice president. So I've said to you that there are five vice presidents. Chamisa is probably looking at a structure with five vice presidents. If Dr. Tokuzani Kupe is appointed as one of the vice presidents, one out of five, it's clear, it's clear to me, there's no doubt that Fadzai Mahere is going to quit. She's going to leave the, the CCC. Where still, if she is not appointed a vice president, it would be total chaos. And this will even threaten the chances of Chamisa winning the 2023 elections. In fact, I can say safely that Chamisa's chances of, of winning this, uh, this 2023 elections are almost zero. Because how do you win an election with so much confusion? How do you win an election without a team? Chamisa does not have a team. The CCC does not have a team. And it all goes back to the same thing that I just said, that Chamisa cannot create a team. He cannot create a system. He is afraid of making the same mistakes that he made after the death of Morgan Changrai, continuing the same people that were there, but who were plotting behind his back. And this obviously is a key problem. There, there's no other problem that you can have than failing to move forward. Uh, Chamisa is right now going to be addressing rallies. I imagine Chamisa is going to be addressing rallies in Matveleland this weekend. He's addressing rallies for what purpose? When you go back, the party has not been set up. There are no structures on the ground. You don't know who is who. Who are the chairmen of CCC in the provinces? Who is in the standing committee? What is the constitution of the CCC going to look like? It's, it's a, a total, it's like a church. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the CCC is like a church, a small church in a village, which does not have structures, which has got the pastor, but no one else. So Chamisa, obviously, that's, that key witness of his is being identified by people around him. You can see that Tendaibit is totally quiet. He doesn't want to talk. Job Scala is quiet. He doesn't want to talk. Uh, Washman Nube, he just goes away. The person who's actually doing work now is Dr. Tokzani Kupe. The rest of the people, they, are, they have seen that Chamisa cannot create a system, cannot make CCC a formidable force. And obviously, this goes to, if I go back, who Mahere is and who Kudamisa Siwa is. These guys, they are coming into the CCC was, to me, a, a stroke of genius. To get Mahere to support Chamisa is critical of him as he was. He must have done a lot. And to get someone like Kudamisa Siwa to come in there and assist with the fundraising, that was a, a great idea. There is no one right now in the CCC with capacity to do fundraising the way that Kudam Sasua has done. I think most of you will know that Kudam Sasua has built a company from the ground. In Zimbabwe, this is very difficult. Kudam Sasua has built a company from the ground, not just a company, but a technology company, a functioning one, which has been in place for over, I think this is the fourth year now. His wife today just won an award. These guys are doing agri agriculture, scientific agriculture, but they've managed to stay in Zimbabwe, do their farming, and at the same time, support the CCC. Father Emma here is someone who's running a profitable and quite prominent law firm. She's managed to represent very key people in Zimbabwe in some very important cases. So Chamisa has done well by bringing these two. But because of the mistakes that they're making, you're going to see Mahere and Kudamsa Siwa. They're going to go out. Other key people are going to go out. You probably end up with the just Hopo outside, uh, who is going to stay because Hopo has got no constituency, he's got no business. So all he has to do is probably to stay relevant. He's going to keep on supporting Chamisa. And as I said, if you look back at the period of hashtag this flag, Kudam Sasua was very, very key. And then during the key of the, the time of the transition or the removal of Mugabe, Kudam Sasua hired buses and he was working with the war veterans. You remember that day, Kudamsa Siwa went out 
together with uh, people like Mahere, they were there, and they were key in mobilizing young people to support the change of the government of Robert Mugabe to the current government of uh, President Mnangagwa. So these are not people that you take for granted. When I saw them working with Chamisa, I said, okay, Chamisa is starting to make some changes here. But obviously, they are starting to see that weakness that we've always been saying, that Chamisa has got key problems of setting up a system. He cannot set up an administration. He cannot set up a financial system. He cannot set up even operations of the CCC. They've got no office. They've got no... Imagine this whole month. How many times have you heard from the CCC in terms of the internal programs? Zero, nothing. So the CCC is paralyzed because it does not have people in key positions who can push the launch of the party. The party is not launched ever since the by-elections came because of all this confusion. And then they've started losing people. Imagine, how are you going to replace Kudam Sasiwa? And also, you see what happened with Ricky Fire. Ricky Fire, who was singing with Chamisa at every rally that he went to, struggling right now. I think his GoFundMe managed to raise less than 100 pounds. It, it's shocking uh, what happened there. Now, let's look at what is probably going to happen. And I, I want to look at Chamisa, why he's having so many problems. I, I've already explained to you that Chamisa does not trust anyone around him. He does not trust BET, he does not trust um, Mube, he does not trust uh, all the people that are around him. He wants to work with them, but he does not trust them. So what is probably going to happen, and uh, as I, I don't even speak under correction here, because we have predicted quite a number of things that are going to happen in the CCC. Firstly, other key people are going to depart. If Chamisa does not move fast and set up a, a leadership structure, you are going to see the departure of a, a lot of other people key people from Chamisa's party. And these people, where they're going to go is going to surprise you. The only other place that these people can go is to ZANU-PF. So you are going to see key people moving from the CCC going to ZANU-PF. And when that starts happening, you have a problem. Because what this means is that you have key secrets of what is happening within the CCC falling into the hands of zanu -PF. and this will help zanu -PF, obviously in the campaign and as the ccc continues to weaken this is going to speed up you're going to see more and more people moving from chamisa going to zanu -PF. and i think zanu -PF guys they will not lose this opportunity to say okay these guys have come out of ccc how can you incorporate them into our structures even if it doesn't mean incorporating them in the structures how can we work with these people that are leaving chamisa then, obviously, if you look at someone like BT, his political career is over. Scala, his political career is over. There's no way these guys are going. They've been in place for years. And the CCC has been failing to reinvent itself. People like Ostalos, they do not understand how to create relationships. And what I mean is that they want to monopolize Chamisa. So there are a lot of people who want to monopolize Chamisa. They want to take photographs with Chamisa. They want to go around with Chamisa but they actually don't want or they don't have the capacity to do anything. This is the weakness of Chamisa. This is the weakness of the CCC, a party that is operating without structures, a party that is operating without an, a, a leadership uh, ideology, no, no constitution, nothing, and then they expect to win the elections. How they expect to win an election without a proper system, I do not understand. And I, I don't know, I even want to go back to what the think tanks have said. The think tanks have said Chamisa is not going to win in 2023 because of lack of grassroots structures, uh, lack of a coalition, and lack of the ability to mobilize the, the grassroots to revolt against the uh, government of President E. Dimnangam. Those three things are still not there. The CCC is still a shell. It's not yet a proper political party. And obviously, there are a lot of bootlickers surrounding Chamisa. If you look at the rallies that he holds, you're going to think Chamisa will do so well. 
but the weakness becomes it's at the leadership level. There is nothing you can do if you cannot organize your leadership, which is what Chamisa has been failing to do. Still, it was MTC Alliance. You can imagine that ever since the CCC was formed, there are no cards. There's no membership register. There is no admin structure. There's no way you can contact them. There's no phone number. There's no website. This is unheard of in, in a, a proper country to, to have a political party as big as the CCC having such a, a weak structure. Right. I want to now go to the comments. And as I said, the key of this discussion was that key members of Chamisa's leadership are leaving. And you saw someone like Kudamsa Siwa here who is fed up. He said for his mental health, he has to leave. Uh, he is a key fundraiser. Every single cent that was raised for the uh, by-election rallies, it was raised, raised by this young man. He's leaving, he's going to go. A key advisor to uh, Fadzai Mahere, campaign manager during a, a, a rally, uh, sorry, a, a campaign as an independent candidate. He's leaving. And his leaving is a protest from Fadzai Mahere, who is, who is totally fed up with the behavior of Nelson Chamisa. And I've said to you in the past that Fadzai Mahere worked with someone who is indecisive before. If you look at Pastor Ivan, Pastor Ivan could, make, could not make a decision. Whenever it was time to strike, to hit, and, and, and to score the goal, uh, Pastor Ivan would freeze. He would fail to do the next move. This is what Chamisa is like. When Chamisa is presented with a course of action, he does not act. He sits and looks. And then after some time, when, when everyone is finished talking, Chamisa would do something and pretend as if he's the one who came up with the idea. And this is very, very frustrating to members of his party, especially those who want the party to function. Because the CCC can become a very, very powerful force. But it's not a powerful force. It's just a party of rallies yeah, at the moment as we speak. Right, now let's go to some comments. Um, right. <laughs> Sylvester, tender upenyu. Which things are falling apart, Gambakwe? Good question. Let me tell you what is falling apart. The CCC has got no constitution. The CCC is losing key members of its leadership team, interim team, uh, people like Kudamsa Siwa. The CCC has got a leadership made up of people from MDC Alliance who don't know where they stand. So right now, if you ask me, what is your position? He doesn't know. You ask Welshman Nubi, what is your position? He doesn't know. You ask Kope. OK, Kope just came in. What is your role? They don't know. So there's a leadership vacuum. Or in, what I can say is leaders running around, hitting each other on the head and colliding with each other, not knowing what to do. The only person who knows what to do is Chamisa and Ostalos. Those are the two people who have got roles in the CCC. If Kodana right now announces that he wants to leave, I can bet you that Chamisa has not phoned him to find out where he's living. And if he has asked, he is not going to do anything about it because it's confusion all over. The people who are actually working in the leadership of the CCC are not even people who are in the CCC. For example, the work that uh, Opojino is doing, as bad as it is and as uh, and patriotic as it is, he's doing more communication work than anyone else. The work that Kudamsa was doing, it's more work than anybody else. But they're not officially in the CCC. That is confusion. And that is how and what I mean when I say things are falling apart. And if you look at Jonathan Moyo, I think you, you have looked at the tweets of, of Jonathan Moyo over the past few weeks where he was encouraging them to go to Congress. Where have you ever seen a launch of an organization that is not done? Because this is what has happened. They, they want to launch an organization and they want to go to an election, but they don't want to have a Congress. A Congress is where you elect people from the ward level to the provincial level. And then from the provincial level, you go to the national level. 
how then are you going to appoint these positions if you do not go to a Congress? So that's confusion all over. And that is why if you look at change and if you expect change in Zimbabwe, do not expect it from the CCC. Do not expect Chamisa to suddenly just jump and, and you post some few pictures of people queuing at the bus station and you say, transport is a problem in Zimbabwe, vote for Chamisa. That's not going to be enough. What you need is a proper strategy. You need to look like a government in waiting. And at the moment, the, the party of Nelson Chamisa is not looking like the government in waiting that we expect. And then obviously, Mkoma Jeffers is saying, Koda can't remain in CCC because this CCC is unprofessional. And obviously, he said for his mental health. Uh, I want to see Simbachikanza's comment. I saw someone commenting about Simba here. Simba Chikanza has never been in the UK. Um, Koma Simba, just uh, Google uh, online. When you see Trevor Nguve, when you are speaking to Kuda, there's a big interview that he did. Maybe you'll learn a bit more about Kuda and how much he lost his property when it was being transported from the UK to Zimbabwe. Maybe I got it wrong, but that's what he said. And also, he was in ZANU-PF. He, he said that he was a member of ZANU-PF, a key member of ZANU-PF as a youth leader when he arrived. And you remember that when Chamisa went into office, it was with the assistance of ZANU-PF. You, you remember this past weekend, I was talking to Senator Kalipani Pugin. I think we can unpack this. Chamisa was not the first contender to be the president of the CCC. So during that transition period, when Gabo was removed, Chamisa got assistance to become the first person to be like in front, to be in front of everyone else because of his support for the transition. I, I, do not, I don't want to call it a coup. I want to call it a transition. So Chamisa was right there at the front. And people like uh, S. Lumumba. S. Lumumba was a key member of communicating everything that was happening. Chamisa was very close. And you, he was photographed on numerous occasions with, uh, with Chamisa. And Chamisa was not the president of the CCC at the time. So these people are not coming from now. They're coming from the past. They are interrelated. And as I said to you, all this was happening here in South Africa and in Zimbabwe. When um, S. Lumumba first came here, I think about three weeks before uh, the actual transition, I remember he gave me a call. And... Um, I, 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 it was one of the strangest calls that I have, I've ever seen. Because S just called me from nowhere, from the blue, and he said, hi, hi, pardon. And normally we don't talk, he doesn't call me. And he greeted me and said, no, I'll call you back. And that was the end of it. Then similarly, Trevor Nube just called me from the blue. I, I think I did a video of, uh, of that call. Uh, Trevor Nube, Dr. Nkosana Moyo, they just called me from the blue one Sunday. And I, I did not understand what was going on. Could Amsa see I was down here, uh, Nathan Banana. So a lot of people were down here in SA during the last days of Mugabe because it was very hot in Harare. Things were, you could not do anything in Harare. So the key people that were instrumental during the rise of President Mnangagwa, the young people, people like Could Amsa Siwa, they were around Chamisa. Chamisa cannot obviously have become the president of the MDC alliance without the support and, and cooperation of the people who were in government at the time. But right now, Chamisa wants to act as if Zanupi of uh, there are people that you can never work with or deal with. And I think that is unfortunate because I think he's part of the, the whole system. And without people who are in Zanupi of or who have worked with Zanupi of, Chamisa is going to struggle because the people around him simply lack capacity. They don't have that capacity to mobilize, to form a proper structure which can win an election. Because you don't play with people in Zanupia. You think those people are, are just amateurs. Even at campaigning, Chamisa is struggling. We, we str campaigning. No, we're not talking about a big by election here. We're talking about these small elections you are coming. He's struggling to beat ZANU-PF. So he doesn't need this weak, wishy-washy 
political party, which has got no structures, which has got no offices, which has got no constitution. And you think you can go against ZANU-PF with that? I, I think that is a very, very big mistake that Chamisa is making. Now, let's go to Joseph. Joseph seemed to be speaking for Fadzai. Mayuri doesn't care about party position, and I don't think she will make it a deal if she's not a VP. She's only interested in the MP post for Mount Pleasant. That is why she joined Chamisa. I don't think that's an ambition. Imagine someone going into a political party so that they can become an MP. What is an MP? Honestly, come to think of it, in Zimbabwe, what is the meaning of being an MP? It's like being a, a councillor. These things, their names, but they, they don't have as much an impact as becoming the VP of the CCC. If, if Mahir was to become the, the, the uh, vice president of the VP uh, of the CCC, she is right on the door of becoming the opposition leader in Zimbabwe. I do not think this is correct analysis, uh, Mkoma Joseph. Mahere will make a serious VP, even better than Beat, even better than Watchman Nobe. Because Chamisa has a choice. He can have all these old VPs, or he can change. What Mahere can do is to totally transform politics in Zimbabwe. How many parties do you know in Zimbabwe that has got a female VP? Especially one who is young, who can attract young female voters. Because Mahere is very trendy with the young, uh, young ladies. She, if she posts uh, anything, the young ladies respond. The other people that we have right now, they do not have that. And we are talking here about key strategies uh, and coalitions. If you were to put Mahere in as, as VP, you have a totally new party. Even when you go out to talk to uh, lesser embassies, to international organizations, NGOs, you're someone who is representing what the CCC is supposed to represent, which is the new. You can't have the new with an old structure. And this is where Chamisa doesn't get it. He thinks he can just do this with an old, weak structure that is not defined. That is the problem, uh, which, which I've been saying here for week after week. Chamisa does not understand how to win an election. He thinks an election is won at a rally. That's not correct. You don't win an election at a rally. You win the election six months before the election. Raka and the knew he was going to win six months before the election. Uh, Lung was totally defeated by that time. At the moment, the CCC is not won. The, they are one year from the elections and they are still fighting internal battles. If you, you give them the office now, what are they going to do? They, they will not be able to do anything. Right, let's look at um, Molin Mufuri Ranwa. He's saying, small church church on Dio Triku, Dayo, you are wasting your time. Tosan and 2023, full stop. I'm going to bookmark this. And I want uh, young CCC guys to understand how elections are won. But anyway, I've been explaining this for a long time. That when you are talking about winning an election, it's a different ball game. It's not these, um, these games that the guys are, play, are playing. Uh, and especially if you are going to lose your key people, a winning team does not lose people. Everyone wants to go into a winning team. If you see someone losing key people, that is not a winning team. There's even more that we don't know that is happening. And then Shomane is saying, instead of quitting, please sit down with this Chamisa, establish a strong party. Quitting is a sign of weakness. <laughs> Shomane, you want to make me laugh. So what happened is, I just want, I'm laughing because you said this, Chamisa. So because I, I'm always on YouTube and I'm always talking about Chamisa. So I'm driving in Zimbabwe, right? And I'd gone there with my kids. And then uh, as we were passing by, we, we passed the, the banner of 
the, I think the banner of President Mnangagwa. And then I say to the kids, this is the president of Zimbabwe. And they say, we thought Chamisa was the president. You're always talking about Chamisa. <laughs> so when you say this Chamisa, you, you, you make me laugh because obviously, I'm not saying here that Chamisa is, is a write-off. What I'm saying is that Chamisa wants to create a new thing, but he wants to use old materials to create a new thing. And that won't work. Chamisa wants to create a new political party that will win an election without taking the difficult decisions. He doesn't want to make the difficult decisions that will make him win. And the difficult decision is to trim off the old people, create a new structure, start creating a formidable party that when you look at it, it looks like it's going to win. It's like if you take Dynamos and Highlanders, those two teams, they don't wear torn uh, uniforms, they don't train on the streets of Mabuku, the, their players don't sleep at a school the night before uh, the, the big soccer matches. That is because they're winning teams. Currently, what Chamisa is doing is like taking teams from the boozers and trying to make sure that it wins the Premier Soccer League. That won't work. He's not doing the necessary stuff. And people around Chabisa, they know this. There's so much confusion. Anyone who tries to contribute in the CCC is crushed. And, and they are gone after by the old people from the, the political party of, of Changirai. The, the culture there is still there. And then my general always says, uh, Kudama stay as a farmer. We don't care about him in CCC. Uh, that speaks for itself. And then uh, Lifas is saying, Chamisa, his friend is a friend man. If he has to make a change, those top dogs is, is finished. Basically, he's being held at captivity by BT, by Ngube, by Wende. Wende, who, who was advancing a very strange theory. I cannot imagine that a CCC leader was uh, advancing a theory on Gaddafi and nothing happened to him. I, I was expecting Chamisa to cut his head off. And then Mkoma uh, Jetwa says, yeah, good points here. Administrative systems need to be set up. Right, I want to end this. Uh, KD Map says, Juma Olete raises funds for CCC. Stop lying to the people. Juma hasn't raised funds for the CCC rallies. Of course, I'm not saying Kuda took money from his pocket and put it to the CCC. What I'm saying is the GoFundMe is the one who was a key driver there. I also want to, to look at one thing that I've been saying here. Tinoma Mbeo. You remember that Tinoma Mbeo was one of the key people to raise funds for the car of Nelson Chamis. Where is Tinoma Mbeo now? He's very, very quiet. The reason is because the people who are trying to assist, they are very, they're easily crushed uh, there by CCC. They, that's a, a very dangerous minefield, uh, the CCC, because it's a free for all, basically. Anyone there does what they want. And Chavisa does not want to stamp his authority. He does not want to create that new structure and draw boundaries for people, which is quite dangerous. Right, I want to, and of course, I, I, don't, I don't want to end this without talking about Freeman Chari. Freeman Chari. You saw what happened to Freeman Chari a few weeks back. Um, and this always happens to, to the people who, who try to assist the most. People like Jonathan Moy, people like Freeman Chari, people like Tinoma Mbeu, they try to assist, but the culture does not allow uh, to... to for these people to come forward. The cream does not come at the top in the CCC. The cream goes somewhere at the bottom. You know, like that village milk, where, where you open it and there's lots of water in the milk. That is how the CCC is, because of this lack of structures, because of this lack of systems. And you can't say when your key fundraiser leaves, you, you take it for granted, you laugh it off and you say nothing. You won't win. It's, uh, it's as easy as that. 
it, it's um it's almost impossible for the CCC to win in this direction that they've taken. And for Chamisa, he'll be a guy that when you look back, you say, how did this guy lose? Because he's got so much support. Wherever Chamisa goes, you, you see people jumping, following him around. All he needs is to take that energy, focus it towards Zanpiov. At the moment, he's got all this energy. It's like a guy with a machine gun who's shooting in the air all over when your enemy is in front of you. He is shooting at the wrong things. And his people are, are frustrated with his leadership style. That is definitely the biggest problem we have in the CCC. And also, Zanupiev, uh, to Chamisa, he must understand that it's not a, an enemy. He needs to engage with, uh, with Zanupiev because in 2023, Chamisa is unlikely to win this election. His, his biggest chance is going to come in 20, I think it's 2028 or 2030, somewhere there. That is where his biggest chance is going to come. And this time that he's got, it's a time for him to learn, a time for him to become part of the system. Because as I always say, you cannot take over a system that you're not part of. So first, Chamisa has to create his system. Then he has to join the existing system because his system must grow within the existing system and take it over. You can take this approach of hope of always criticizing, criticizing, criticizing every day. And um, you think you're going to convince people to vote for you. As a leader, he needs to get in there. He needs to... If I was Chamisa right now, I would be pushing for... Uh, sort of like a, 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 a government of national unity even before the elections. That should be an objective to say, let's find a way of creating a GNU, take a lower position and learn for the next uh, 10 years and then you become the president after that. Right, this has been interesting. I, I really enjoyed talking to you about the goings on in the CCC. And by the way, I talk to people like um, Kuda. It's not like I don't talk to Kuda. Right now, if I want to phone Kuda, I'll pick my phone and call him. If I want to phone Ostalos, I can pick my phone and call him. If I want to phone Chamisa right now, I can do it. I've got his number. Or Hopo. If I want to do it, I can do it. Or phone Mahere. But that's not the point. The point is, people think change is going to come from the removal of Zanupiev and the entry of the CCC. But that's actually not the point. Change is going to come from the political culture in Zimbabwe changing. You need a new political culture in Zimbabwe that recognizes that everyone has got a part to play. And the political culture must be based on excellence. Excellence in the opposition and excellency in Zanupiev. It's similar. In Zanupiev, there are problems. On Saturday, we're going to look at those problems. Let me give you an example. Right now, we all know that the Zimbabwe dollar is falling. It's falling in value. Zanupiev is the ruling party. They should be demanding that the Reserve Bank do something. They should be demanding that the Minister of Finance do something. But it's dead silence. No one is talking. No one is coming out in public and say, fix that dollar, fix that exchange rate, deal with that black market. They don't do it because it's a culture. You've got a poor culture in the country of bootlicking, a poor culture of supporting anything as long as it's on your side. Don't ever think that maybe there is an in-between. There's something we can do which is not ZANPF, which is not CCC something of national interest so this is the problem that we have and people end up just quitting like kuda is done here and like Mahir is going to do if they appoint kope here as a vice president in the ccc there will be chaos you you will see it uh the, that that decision will will totally tear the ccc apart but if they don't give it a, a proper position what will happen is that 
the CCC will not get proper votes in Matavelli and and they will lose to to, to President Nangaba, obviously, in the twenty twenty three elections. Right, so that is it. Very long rant from my side. The only person who can rant more than me or who can talk to himself for long than me is Kuda. I used to watch what he used to call the Tita uh, when, uh, when back in the days of this flag and I'll be driving to Jobek. I would watch Kuda from the moment I leave my house in the morning to the house, the, the moment I enter my office in Johannesburg. That used to take me like an hour. And that was, that, that was before COVID. So yeah, that is it. Uh, I normally don't come on Thursdays. So I'll be back here on Saturday. I saw Senator Kalpani Pugin commenting there. <laughs> He's saying that I'm obsessed. It's not true, Senator. That's what we do here. Gambako Media is the only place where you're going to be told the truth about CCC. Everyone else is bootlicking Chamisa. And it, it, Chamisa is getting such poor advice. Um, even from my my best friends, uh, people like um, Simbach Kanza, he doesn't like criticizing Chamisa. Uh, Hope Chingono doesn't like criticizing Chamisa. Chingono is quiet right now uh, when Kuda is quit. That's surprising. That guy comments about the God, about anything. But now that Kuda Msasso is quit, he doesn't uh, want to talk about it. My brother, Senzele Ndebele, he doesn't talk about anything. When Chamisa does something and it's not working for him, he just supports the thing. They go. So journalism in Zimbabwe is very strange. Uh, they take sides. Like they they want to be seen as supporters. They don't want to rock the boat because they think they won't get views. I get so many views from anybody. I don't care if I if I get one view, that's enough for me. I don't want to get thousands of views from people who who just talk one thing. I want to. In fact, what I want to do, I want to create a media that doesn't worry about who who thinks what. Say what you think, and um, yeah, that, that's how it's, it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be one person can never make mistakes. And if you're tired of ZANU PF, you know what to do. Fix the CCC. Make it work. Don't support a political party that is a ragtag political party. That's got no structures, no constitution, no leadership structure, no nothing. And you think they're going to win. Right. That has been a long, long discussion. And thank you very much for watching. And thank you all for your comments. We'll be back again on Saturday. Good night. <laughs> Oh, I know.